Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventure 365, the channel that's going places. And on this episode, we're upgrading Beryl's brakes. If you've watched previous episodes, especially ones on the channel that shall not be named, we put drilled and slotted discs on the rear of Beryl, so we're doing the same on the front. Like I said, we're upgrading the front brakes to drilled and slotted. Just get this out of the bag. These are not light. So these are Britpart drilled and slotted rotors. And that's what I'm putting on the front. We're putting new pads on and I'll tidy up a few other bits on the front that I want to check at the same time. But uh, shiny, look at that. Isn't that nice? Very close up Luke. That's awesome. This is what we've got on the rear and I've had these on my other truck for quite a long time, a good couple of years. Uh, they're great. They're, they do make a lot of difference to the braking, especially heat dissipation. If you know how these work, you'll know that they're, they're drilled and slotted for degassing the pads when they're getting hot. There's a whole science to it. If, you, if you're really that interested in it, go and, look, go and look into it. It's quite fascinating. But yeah, let's get these on and uh, hopefully Beryl will stop. So first job, jack up the car, truck, whatever you're doing. You've got to jack it up, get the wheels off. So I've got a trolley jack under there, so I'm going to get this jacked up and we'll get this wheel off and we'll start pulling the entire hub assembly apart. It's a very straightforward job and while we're at it we're going to change the wheel bearings and I'll show you why. Safety first, put some gloves on, get the truck jacked up. We do need to chuck an axle stand under this but I want to get the wheel out of the way first. So let's get these nuts off, make sure that's in the right direction. The Makita Impact, not a bad gun, but nowhere near as good as the Milwaukee Fuel one. If Milwaukee wants to send me one, I'll test it. Get this bad boy out of the way. Ugh. Now obviously I want to get this brake disc off. So first thing, go take the caliper off and then I've got to take the whole hub assembly out. And like I said, we're going to change the wheel bearings because these are TD5 wheel bearings in here and I'm actually going to retrofit them to 300 TDI wheel bearings because they're just easier to deal with if you ever have an issue when you're out on a trip. So first job, caliper off, and I don't want to split the brake system, so I'm actually going to pull the two bolts out at the back uh, that hold the brake pipe in. I'm going to take the whole lot off in one piece. So before I do anything, I was getting ahead of myself, I need to take the brake pads out. So they're easy enough to do. Even though these brake pads are brand new, and literally they are brand new, I'm going to change them because I'm putting new discs on. Uh, I don't know how old those are, I know they haven't done a lot of use obviously, but uh, this was the second hand axle that I picked up. so. Uh, it's for what they cost, I'm just going to put some new ones in. So now the pads are out, I can loosen the bolts that hold the caliper on. So I can find the right tools. Ah, extension bar's too long. Uh, I'm going to get a short extension. I'm just going to get a short extension, I think a 13mm. Oh, they are. Oh, that's tight. I'm going to have to get a bar. They're thread locked on. Move. I 
There's plenty of thread lock on that one, I'll tell you. I can't get the, that gun in. So I've got that bolt out of the back and just have a look how much thread lock there was on it. Uh, all of it I think, no wonder it was stiff. So I've left one bolt in because it's loose, it's only just above finger tight. But I'm assuming that's covered in thread lock as well. No, it's not that tight. We'll just leave that one in for now. Um, because I want to get the two top bolts out of the swivel house. I don't want to break the brake system open. Uh, I could take that pipe off and take the caliper off, but then I'd lose my brake fluid and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo those two bolts and then I'll torque them back up to, I can't remember off the top of my head, something like 60 newton meters. I think they're supposed to be done or 64, but I'll check. But I'll take those out, take them out first, uh, then we can just take the whole caliper off. So then we will take that off. We're going to take the drive flange, oh that wasn't very tight was it? So take that nut off and get the circlip removers, or well, in my case it's a pair of ground down needle nose pliers, get the shims from behind and there's one big shim in that, don't lose them, put them safe, oh, I've lost them. Now take the drive flange off. And we don't need that because we've got a new one. Now we've got a TD5 wheel bearing on this and like I said we're refitting them so I need to get, these are staked so I need to get that knocked out. So, uh, I broke my panel hammer, look at that. Did that. I've actually done the other side and I broke my hammer doing it. should come off at that. Now you're going to love this. I had to weld a box spanner to a piece of metal because I've lost my 52mm socket. So I've got to get a new one. So hopefully that will actually undo it. Yeah it will. It did the other side. Isn't that the most dangerous tool you've ever seen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cut this off because that's actually the one I use for viscous fans. In the bin. Right, now we've got that loose. Oh God. That was, that top bolt was loose. So this was worth checking while we were, while we were up here. 
Oh, and the, the other one's actually finger tight. So uh, that's not good. Right, now I've loosened those off. Uh, I need to get a drip tray under there because it's going to drip oil while I'm taking the caliper off. So, uh, uh, some, a cardboard box will do. So that was worth checking because that was finger tight. I can talk them back up to spec now. I said there's supposed to be 60 something odd newton meters. I will check in a minute. I think there's supposed to be something like 60, I think the 65. I could be wrong, I have been wrong before. But I am a man and I will never admit it. I bought myself 14 more ratchet spanner for that, would have been a lot easier. Undone. We can take the bolt out the back of the brake. Should be able to lift the whole thing out. Not as easy as it looks. Sit there for a minute. Give me about that nut. We just need to run those two bolts back into the top of the swivel house. there to catch the crap. So that'll be fine there, we'll give that a quick clean up before it goes back on. That one's a quick straightening because it is actually bent. So we can take the entire hub off now and give everything a good clean. So we can take that off. Don't worry about bearings because we're going to replace them and we're going to clean that up first and check the spindle. I can already tell you, there's nothing up with that spindle, it's fine, that's good. It is a really good job there's nothing up with that spindle because I haven't got another one. Well, I think I have actually, but probably not as good as that one. I'll give that a spray off in a bit with a bit of uh, degreaser, uh, a bit of brake clean or something. Oh, we, we did lose some oil, but not too bad, only a bit. Give that a wire brush off as well. Right, we'll do the wheel bearings now. I'm just going to pull these bearings out. Now I know for a fact that Timkin, these are Timkin bearings but they're well worn. When I took them out, they were, well, the ones on the other side weren't that good, so I'm discarding them anyway. But, uh, I need that bit. I don't need the rest. I will save that. That is the spacer for the, that's like the, um, I want to say crush spacer for the TD5s, but it actually doesn't crush, so it's the spacer that goes in the TD5 bearings. But we're not putting those back in. So that just can be cleaned up and put on the shelf, just in case we ever do need it. So we can knock the other bearing out and then we can get the brake disc off. Now somewhere I have a chisel. Now I'm just going to punch the, the seal. There we go. Just punch the seal and the bearing out. So it's definitely scrapped now. Just take the... Oh, 
there, there's the back race. What's that one look like? It actually doesn't look too bad, that one. But, like I said, they're not staying anyway, so. Yeah, they're all right. There's a little bit of wear on them. She's just a little bit worse than the back one. Right, I'm getting all this nasty grease out. It's actually quite. There's a lot of new grease and a lot of dirty grease in it. I wonder if they've just been repacked at one time. I'm going to get a clean piece of cloth, get all this cleaned up, and I'll be back. I was rudely interrupted by Karen bringing food back and beer. Mm, cold Guinness. So back on with getting this done and uh, drinking this. Nice and shiny like. Right, get this disc off now. They weren't very tight. Uh, we need them. <laughs> I hope that was all on film because um, that really wasn't very tight. Wow. I've never actually had one of those just fall off. Okay, it's a good job we're changing that. Because <laughs> that wasn't tight at all. Okay. Okay, it's on with the new. Which I think we're going to put on slightly tighter than the one we just took off. Right, I'll find the torque settings for those. Now the seven, these are 72 Newton meters and I don't think I can hold it and do it. I'll just pop this in the vise and sort this and we'll be back. I just popped that in the vise and torqued it up to 72 Newton meters. So hopefully that one's actually on because that other disc was definitely loose. I have never seen one fall off like that and the bolts weren't even tight. So uh, probably a good job we were actually replacing these because I'd be wondering what that noise was. What's that noise every time you break? That's the disc coming off. Mm. That's better. So, uh, right, I can put the bearings in there. So I'm just going to drift the race into this. So I new one of those to go on, new dry flange. So I've got a new bearing to go in. Make sure you put it in the right way around it. It's annoying when you don't. That's going in. That's going in nicely. I need to get um, one of those bearing seating kits. Uh, like the cones for driving the races in. I really do need to get one of those. That is not yet seated all the way. And that is seated all the way. Right, now we'll get the, the new one out. The old one out, I mean. Awesome. 
So once you've got uh, your new race knocked all the way in and seated, get the uh, bearing packed and then just do the same on the other side. This really isn't a bearing fitting video by the way. Well, at least it didn't start out like that. Now you just go pack your bearing. When you're doing this, you just want to work the grease up through the bearing and you'll actually see it start coming out the other side. It's much easier if you wear a pair of gloves as well because it, uh, for some reason it seems to help work the grease up. All right, now we've got that bearing packed, we need a new seal. Lovely. Right, just repeat the same on the other side and this is ready to go back on guys. Hooray, we're nearly there. There we go. I pressed the bearing on the other side, there's a bit of an excess amount of grease on there. Yes, I pressed the bearing, I put, I put the bearing in on the other side, oh, sorry, this side. And uh, it's all ready to go back on then once you've done that. The first thing to do, just torque up the bearing. I'm not going to use a fancy run out, what's it, I'm just going to do it by feel. As, uh, that already feels nicer than the other bearings actually. So we'll get this uh, bolted up and it's just a case of reassembling now. Now we've got the new disc on, new set of pads, put the caliper on and that's it. We've got uh, operated front brakes. These will be a lot better than the ones we took off. Even though the other ones were vented, um, the drilled and slotted are just going to help. They help with the gassing off and everything of the brakes, so that's going to help with the weight of the truck. So let's get this uh, bearing sorted. Going to use my special tool. Can't go to Alfred's and buy one of these, you know. Stop rubbing, I can't hear you. Feels a bit tight. That feels better. We're going to call that good. And there's a million of you going to say, that's not how you do it. It is if you come here. It's like having a Lionel Blair haircut. Now, a Lionel Blair has his haircut. It is if he comes here. Feels fine. all the dirt out of this we're going to put the new drive flange on uh, with new bolts as well
And then all we've got to do is put the brake caliper on and we're done. Easy job. Well, would be if I hadn't have just lost my um, impact gun. We'll just torque that up once the wheel's on. Uh, we need to put the uh, circlip on and the spacer. that on. Right, now I've got to cut that up and uh, turn it back into what it was. So I've just put the brake caliper back on uh, and I'm just talking down that top nuts and that one and that one I can't get into with the torque wrench so because brake pipe's in the way so let's feel how tight that one is it's got, got to be tighter than it was because they were loose so hopefully there's no play in that now oh that's yeah there's no play in that now there isn't that because it's not bolted on so we just put the bolts in the brake caliper and I can't remember what they're talked up to. Something silly. I'll find that in a second. I've just put some new thread lock on them. Not that they needed any more, there was quite a bit already on them. Uh, but we'll get these started and torque them up to 100 newton metres. I can't get a camera in to show you, so. But if you were doing this job, you'd find it. There we go. Just wind them in with a ratchet and I'll be back in a minute to put the brake pads in. I've torqued the caliper up to 100 newton metres and I've just chucked the pads in off camera. Uh, they're just pads, so that's all done. That's all nice and free. There's no play in it. Those two top bolts are now torqued up to the right settings, uh, which were, I think, 65 newton metres. They were loose. That uh, disc was definitely loose. So it's probably a good job we did this, but look at that. Shiny new rotors. They match the ones on the back now, so it's got the same brakes all the way around. It's, uh, it's another job ticked off the list. So uh, that's it. Chuck the wheel on. This job's done. That's it. Job done. I've already done the other side, so... I've got nothing to show you on that side, it just matches this one. But that's basically how to put on a, a vented disc. And I wasn't going to do the wheel bearings, but they needed doing, so uh, that's a bonus thing. I really didn't go in depth on it. Um, I've done videos before on it. You only get criticism. <laughs> Everyone says, you can't do it that way. I've done thousands of miles on them. They still work. But uh, yeah, that's it guys. So vented discs all round on the truck now. Uh, drilled and slotted, that's new wheel bearings, new brakes, new calipers on the rear. Those calipers aren't that old. So uh, hopefully she'll stop and go now. There's just one more job on the back axle. But that's gonna be a different video and that one will be fairly in depth too. So uh, thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, give me that thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.